first demo, integrating cyber and physical access management for 360 degree views of facilities. Today's demo will be presented by Peter Bowles, Senior Regional Technical Manager for Brevo. Peter, I'll turn it over to you. Hey, thank you, Amy. Um, you know, uh, pleasure being here this morning, this afternoon, wherever it might be for uh, the people in attendance. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Pete Bauer. I'm a Senior Regional Technical Manager here at Brevo. Um, excited to kind of show you around and, and give you an understanding of what, what it is that we do. Um, so Brevo is a global leader in cloud-based access control. Okay, uh, for those of you that are familiar with access control, um, traditionally it's a it's an on-prem type of a thing. You've got a server, you know, in a dusty closet someplace that uh, you know is typically a failure point. Hard drives fail, all of that kind of stuff. Our ecosystem allows us to um, really scale access control and allow you to put it in multiple facilities and manage it remotely. Um, and it makes for a, a lot less of a lift on, on an IT perspective um, and everything else. So we are the, the global leader. We've been doing cloud access for uh, 21 years now. Um, I like to say, you know, we've been doing it long before the cloud was cool, right? Everything's the cloud from Amazon to Netflix or anything else. Um, so in general, Brevo is, you know, the foundation of of the building, right? Uh, the smart spaces for commercial real estate, uh, for uh, light commercial, large commercial enterprise across the board, right? Um, we've been that base building, those common area doors for a number of years now. Um, you know, uh, we like to bring everything into one single pane of glass is the general idea. So we're access control at its core, but we are able to provide and bring insights in from you know things like wireless locks and and intercoms and uh, bring cameras directly into our ecosystem so you can marry like a camera to an access event things like those. Um, our other abilities paired with our um, smart devices like our gateways and ability to bring in sensors for you know a, a plethora of of different things. So uh, Brevo Access is our fourth generation user interface, which we'll demo here in just a minute. Um, you know, what that is, is going to give you the ability to control all of your access doors, manage your tenants or users, remotely control unoccupied spaces, uh, really review the information that's going on at all of your facilities, right? Understand if uh, you have a high volume of people coming in through particular doors, understand if you're getting an uninherent amount of uh, user events uh, going on, um, as well as understand and connect with, you know, visitor management and all devices right from one login, from whatever browser, from anywhere with the network connection. Um, so managing many locations, of course, is no problem with the, the way that we spin up if you have a valid internet connection. And in some, in some cases, sometimes if you don't, we have a cellular network module that connects to a panel and allows you to get those doors uh, up into the cloud. Because of that and our topology of account and then multiple sites, what we're able to provide to you is a management interface accessible from anywhere uh, that can span globally, right? We manage multi-site, multi-location across multiple continents in a very uh, simplistic way. So um, user management. So we obviously inherently manage users. You can log into our ecosystem and add a user put them into a group and so on. Um, but a big takeaway is a lot of corporations today are using identity management. Identity management being, you know, the G Suite or Okta, Azure AD, you know, um, to enter one user in a one data entry point and put them in multiple systems. Well, Brevo is a downstream mechanism of that. So the example being, you know, enter Pete Bauer into my Okta instance, and it puts me into all the different systems that I utilize uh, to run a business. Well, Brevo being one of them, it puts Pete Power then into Brevo as a user and gives me group permissions. The beauty behind all of that is it's a, a linked instance at that point. So I go back into Okta if I were to ever get, or my administrator goes back into Okta if, if I was to ever get fired or you know quit and they tick one box and that instantly suspends me down into Brevo and removes me from the rest of the systems. Um, we are an open, API platform. So what that means is we have a, a plethora of different API uh, integrations out there like this that allow for those efficiencies within your facilities. 
Um, so yeah, I think from there, what I'll do is I'll just share my screen. We'll walk through the interface and you know take some questions there towards the end. Okay, so just confirm if you could, Amy, you guys are seeing my login screen right now, right? Yeah, that's good. Fantastic. Thank you. So uh, like I said, um, you're going to get into Brevo and manage these systems from anywhere with a network connection. Uh, I'm in a hotel in Arlington, Virginia right now, right? And I can manage uh, sites all the way out into Eindhoven uh, in Germany. Um, so I'm using Chrome, but of course, your browser of choice. You come in as an administrator with the login, so an email and a password, and you simply click login. Okay, so from here, uh, I'm just gonna select the particular account. Most circumstances, there's just gonna be one here, but so I'm gonna jump into our main sales demo. And here we are, okay? Uh, we're loaded at first with our event tracker page. The event tracker page is going to give me insights to all of the things that are happening on not just one system, but systems uh, regionally or across the globe. You can see we've got folks coming through doors in Atlanta right now. Um, and you can see that the verify user functionality is here. So if you did have a building with say, you know, a guard up front, you know, this is gonna give that validity to, you know, look at Steve is the person that just came the door or that is Karen that came through the door, you know. Um, we can filter all of this stuff out by current day, particular events. Or if we wanted to just see sites from, you know, Bethesda and Atlanta, we can do so by filtering it out here. So again, it's all of your access events, failed access events. This is pretty standard, the typical stuff, okay? Some really cool features about uh, our fourth generation user interface here is, for instance, that global view. When I click global view, that's going to give me perspective of all of my sites uh, across a region or across multiple continents like you see here today. What we're able to do is kind of zoom in on these maps or click down into one of these ones in red, showing that there's particular critical events. We can filter through those critical events. I can come through, through here and clear and add notes to them um, and give an indication to any other admins that may log in after me to say, hey, this has been handled. Uh, we did uh, you know, research on it. We're also able to confirm that the panels are connected and, and ready to go. So again, some real flexibility here, a lot of data from the background. The whole idea is to give the power of the data that normally sits on that server to you all uh, to manage your buildings and your facilities, right? To have a better understanding of what's going on. Uh, case in point, um, you know, we've got what's called Data Explorer. So what Data Explorer does is takes the background information from everyday access control and turns it into an interface that, you know, you can utilize and understand, you know, the recent activity at particular sites and understand that the excuse me, the Bethesda office um, has a pretty high event count, right? We've got people coming back into that office, not so much in the UK. Um, so you can build different charts and graphs here um, and really parse down into the data to give an understanding of what's going on. Uh, I'll use this bubble map just because it's fun and easy. Um, you know, based on the size and color of the circle is the amount of events that have been happening. So if you look here in Atlanta, we've got 34,000 events that have been going on. Well, I can adjust that data in a few different ways. I can say, well, I want to understand what events are happening across my entire portfolio, right? I got open events. I got failed access unknown credentials. Someone's making an attempt with a card and they're not in my system. Well, where is that happening? I can then zoom down and say, okay, well, at what site is this going on? Most inherently, it's happening in Berlin, okay? Getting the picture here. We're taking all that data and making it accessible for you all to run your facilities and your operations. Okay. Aside from that, more of some of the basic functionality of Brevo is that of the device status page. So the device status page is going to give you the ability to manage those sites on an individual basis. So what we can see here is every site and categorized out of what devices are actually there. In the Bethesda area, we've got control panels, we've got doors, we've got cameras. Here I can show you uh, the experience of an integrated camera. So the experience center is actually at our corporate headquarters and it's married to an access control door. So someone calls you up and says, hey, I forgot my key fob. I can't get in the front door. You can literally log in here or the administrative app, see them at the door and say, all right, give me just a second. Pulse the door. You'll see an LED turn on on that panel behind it. Um, you know, there you go. Head on in. Okay. 
Um, so all of this stuff, again, at the power of your fingertips from your phone, uh, from your browser. Um, you know, we have the ability to come into particular doors as well and adjust them. So, you know, I could set a schedule to this door or I could set a temporary override today until five o'clock. We could unlock this door or I could, as an admin, just go ahead and pulse unlock it for somebody. Of course, all of this is able to be segregated down by admin permissions, which I'll talk on here in, in just a moment. Um, so yeah, we're you know able to pull in video from our uh, integration with that of like Eagle Eye. So again, that single pane of glass bringing everything into it. I can manage video. I can go back and view recorded video from here as well uh, and create some custom layouts uh, for what cameras I might wanna see uh, alongside my access control. So if you weren't using an identity connector of sorts, you could come in and of course, add users to your system. These users are the folks that are gonna get a credential and come through the door. Um, you know, when I go into create user, I'm simply putting in, you know, general information here, first name, last name type of stuff, email address. Um, you know, an email address. Uh, or if I could type today, brief.com. You can upload the image or take the image right from your computer or from the admin app. Got a bunch of custom field functionality here. You can kind of build these fields however you need to. Uh, this is where we'd add a group. So a group assignment dictates what doors this user is going to be able to go through and at what time. So give a couple assignments here. And then you roll into the credential. So a credential, of course, could be your traditional FOB or it could be your traditional um you know card maybe a pin or it could be a mobile pass so we're one of the first companies to ever uh deploy mobile pass throughout uh, an ecosystem and what this allows you to do or your users to do is if i hit assign here it pushes an email out to this user has them take a couple action steps and now what they're able to do is open those doors that they're assigned to right with their smartphone okay it's pretty powerful especially on a remote perspective to be able to push that credential out as opposed to having to hand someone that physical credential, you know? So there we've added some users, um, you know, outside of, of that, uh, I guess what I would wanna show you is our administrative capabilities, right? Uh, most of the time, there's not maybe one facilities manager out there, right? There's a team, especially on larger portfolios. So uh, the administrators are the folks that can log in here like I am today, and we can really get granular as to what they're able to do, right? Every admin is not the same uh you know in some commercial instances maybe you have an admin that sits up at a front desk and needs to push out credentials um you know that's totally different than being able to come in here and go into data explorer global view right a lot of the times those folks are fearful that they're going to mess something up um so what we can do is you can actually create an admin and on the first part of it actually partition it down to sites so this particular site has like you know, 15 different, uh, this particular account has like 15 different sites. And so let's use the regional management perspective. And let's say that, you know, Atlanta and Bethesda are my region. Well, I create this admin and I give them Atlanta and Bethesda. So when they log in, those are the only sites that they're going to be able to see and won't be able to manipulate or see any of the other sites. Same thing with groups. So with group permissions, I can say you can only put people in these groups that are inherent to Atlanta and Bethesda. And additionally, you're only going to be able to see the people from those groups. So now you can partition the user database that this admin can even manipulate or see. Furthermore, on top of that, what we're going to do is allow you to apply a role to this administrator. What that role does is really get granular as to what the admin can actually do in the user interface. So over here on the left-hand column, I can actually dictate what things show and what things don't. Uh, I used the example of that credential manager uh, a moment ago. So, you know, this is a custom role that was built out. And you'll, what you'll notice is I've got all these categories in here. So account config tool or global view or data explorer, no access. Okay. But you can continue to scroll through the screen and you'll notice that all of these things, device status page, like I showed you, this person would have no access to that. Um, I keep coming down. Well, now they have full access to users, no access to groups. So if this was the role that was applied to the administrator, when they logged in, all they would have is this users tab right here. All they would be able to do is manipulate a user, suspend or uh, reinstate, okay? Um, 
So in admin permissions, you know, uh, the ability to come in here and say that, uh, you know, maybe Angie is no longer here or she lost her card. Well, we're going to go ahead and suspend Angie in case somebody shows up with that card again, right? Very simple, uh, easy to use. Um, we'll reinstate her. Uh, another thing um, that I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about is our ability to manipulate lockdown scenarios. So if you did have some sort of threat come into a building or something like that, we can uh, initiate lockdown scenarios for a single door, uh, a complete site, or the entire enterprise of, of, of a portfolio, right? Um, we build out different scenarios. I can initiate those lockdowns from here or my admin app. Um, when I do initiate a lockdown, I'll do that from here. Everybody who is a mobile pass user, everybody who is an admin on the system are all going to get a notification, uh, a, a notification indicating that there has been a lockdown that's gone into place. The other piece of that is now any admin that comes into this account is going to see this big red bar and understand that there's a lockdown going on. If they get inquisitive, what they can do is hit the review button here, and that's going to pop up and give them an indication of all of the different uh, doors that are kind of inherent to that lockdown. We simply jump in, clear the lockdown out, everyone gets notified again, and um, and we go from there. Um, so yeah, I think uh, with the given amount of time, that's probably you know the bulk of what I wanted to cover there. Um, you know, uh, Amy, uh, do we see any questions come in, or do we want to just queue everybody up and we can kind of yeah, ask them? Or just a reminder, uh, if you have any questions for Peter, please use the Q and A panel at the bottom of your screen to type those in. Um, we do have a few coming in, Peter. Uh, Peter, some people have difficulties with vendors or contractors giving credentials. Can you kind of talk about um, what Brevo would be able to do and kind of what your solution is for, for vendors in the building? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, number one, a lot of the pain point, I think, with, with vendors and contractors within the facilities is, you know, the, the likelihood that they don't give the card back right? So you hand the card out and all of a sudden, um, you know, it's either gone. So you're out the money that you spent on the card, or there's a vulnerability that they might come back or, or something like that later. With our credentials, when you build out a user for contractor ABC, um, you can set those credentials for an expiration date. Um, you can also create them so that they'll suspend at the end of the day, right? Um, and we have the ability within our system now to um, expire unused credentials. So for instance, if you've got this very vast database and uh, you have a bunch of credentials out there assigned to people and they haven't used them in a long, long time, um, we can set thresholds to automatically uh, expire those credentials. Perfect. And you talked a little bit about the mobile pass, the mobile credentials you're able to offer. Um, does that have to be people already in the system or if you have visitors to the building, can you offer them mobile passes? Yeah, if they're willing to download the application, you could certainly, um, you know, provision out those mobile passes. We have multiple API partners, um, you know, some of which are visitor management systems, for instance. And those visitor management systems use what's called our mobile SDK. So that mobile SDK, uh, at times, relative to the integration, can go ahead and push out a mobile pass even within that check-in period. Perfect. Peter, what happens if you talked about Wi-Fi and cell systems? What happens if there's a power outage or, you know, major storm system comes through. Can you talk about some of the redundancies or what kind of resilience plan you have? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's a really great question. Um, so our, all of our panels are um, built in and inherently able to do Ethernet, Wi-Fi, as well as utilize a cellular network module. And we can build the redundancy, for instance, with that cellular network module so that the network does drop out, it communicates over cellular. But a really good point is, you know, like the question gets asked often, like, what happens if my panel drops offline? Am I locked out? Like, how do, how do I get in the doors? Our panels actually cache 250,000 credentials and 50,000, uh, 60,000 events on the onboard memory. So what happens when that panel drops offline is the cardholder interaction doesn't actually change because they're cached on the memory. Uh, as soon as the network comes back up, uh, or cell service comes back around because of a major storm or whatever, all of that data goes back into the system in chronological order for reporting later on. Perfect. 
Well, thank you, Peter. I think that's our, our time is coming to a close for you. Any final thoughts for our audience today? Um, you know, just uh, just thanks again for having me and uh, listening to me ramble for a few minutes. You know, uh, if you are interested in Brevo, by all means, uh, you know, reach out. I believe you guys will be pushing some contact information there at the end. Um, also, you know, a great uh, informational site is, of course, Brevo.com. We've got all sorts of resources on there for anybody that's uh, interested in checking it out.